Okay, good day. This is Math 40 College, 140 College Algebra. I'm Professor McCulley, and this is our final lesson on exponential functions directly. And let's get right to it. So today we're going to identify the parts of an exponential function. We're going to evaluate exponential functions, and we're going to model exponential functions. So first off, let's talk about this, the parts of an exponential function. Uh, just in general, y uh, is equal to a times b to the x. And we generally have some special use functions. We have the simple interest, the compound interest, the PERT equation, and those are going to cover most of your your general use functions. Um, but and we're going to look at some examples of them. But just in general, the initial amount for anything is going to be the a value right here. And the reason that that is is when you're talking about an in initial amount, you're talking about the value that you're starting with, which means in general, your time, if you're calling that your time axis, your time's going to be zero. And remember, when you take anything to the zero power, you get one. So for an initial value, this b to the x is always going to be one. Your growth factor is b, and I have to, to really uh, stop and, and make a, a, a significant point to say that B and the percent uh, and the percent growth are two different things. So the growth factor is B. The percent growth, just a, a simple rule of thumb, what you're going to do is you're going to subtract 1 from B. And then if that B is positive, um, or if the result is positive, you're going to have a percent growth. If it's negative, you're going to have a percent decay. Now, just to kind of give you a, a simple way to look at that, if you go A equals P times 1 plus R to the uh, T, this is the simple interest. The growth factor is the whole thing whereas the percent growth is just this little value. So if you come along to an equation that looks like this, A equals, let's say, 50, um, 1.06 to the T, well, that's a simple interest equation right there for you. And you look at it, and here is your growth factor. The growth factor That's going to be 1.06, but the percent growth what we're going to do is we'll subtract 1 from it and then multiply by 100. So if I subtract 1 from this, I get 0.06. So this is a 6% growth equation. Fairly straightforward. All right, let's do some examples. <clears throat> Excuse me. Do the following uh, models show exponential growth or decay? What's the initial amount, the growth factor, the percent growth, and percent decay? So when I look at this thing here, and there I try to make them all, make them all similar. When I look at this thing, the initial amount for this one, uh, I'll call it IA, that's going to be the 5. That's going to be this value right here. The growth factor, that's going to be the 9 over 10. Now, because the 9 over 10 is smaller than 1, this is going to be uh, a decay. And if I go 1 minus 9 tenths, I'll have 1 tenth. And 1 tenth is 0.1. And so this is going to be a 10% decay. All right. So we look at this one. In this one, my initial amount is going to be um, the 9 tenths. My growth factor is going to be 5. And when I go 1 minus 5, I get 4 this time. 4 is positive. And so if I do the, the little rule of thumb that I had here, multiply that by 4, or excuse me, multiply that by 100. Um, 4 times 100 is going to give me growth by 400%. That's pretty fast. All right, this last one here. The initial amount is going to be 400. The growth factor is going to be 0.87. And when I go 0.87 minus 1, I'm going to get negative 0.13. And so this is again going to be decay. And it's going to be 13%. All right. 
next that says an example given f of 0 equals 3 and f of 2 equals 48 find the exponential function that models the function so what we're trying to do is we're trying to come up with an f of x equaling a b to the x all right now the good news in this one they give us a zero so this this value right here that's the initial amount and so what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out we're trying to figure out what the function is after we've been given two points we've been given that we have 0 3 right here and then 2 way up here 48 so we're trying to figure out this exponential curve right there all right now the good news is when you let x equal to 0 this value here has to be 1 so if I go f of 0 equals um, a b to the 0 I know that I get 3 and anything to the 0 power so a b to the 0 equals 3 and so a has to equal 3 that's good and now I can use that fact and the next value to, to finalize my answer if I plug in 2 if I go um, now I know that a is equal to 3 b to the um, second power I have to have 48 so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to divide both sides by 3. So I got b squared equals, well, 48 divided by 3. I'm recording this early in the morning. And my brain's not quite working. So 16, that's good. So I get 16. The square root of 16, I get b equals plus or minus 4, but this is going to be positive. So we get b equal to 4. And um, with that, we now know both A and B. So our final answer is going to be F of X is equal to 3 for A times 4 to the X power. And I will put a box around that. That's the end. Now, in this example, we have something similar. Unfortunately, we can't use the initial value to get to make this easier. Unfortunately, with this one, we have something simple, similar. So we have, we know that we have 1, 6, and we know that we have, so we have a point here, and we have 4, 162. So we have a point, so we have something that looks like this, and unfortunately, we don't have that initial amount. So unfortunately, since we don't have that initial amount, we're going to have to set up a system of exponential functions. And the way that we do that is we know that f of x is eventually going to equal a, b to the x. And we got to figure out what a and b are. So I'm going to plug in 1 and set that equal to 6. So I'm going to say that 6 is equal to a, b to the first power. And I'm going to say that 162 is equal to a, b to the fourth power. All right. Now, I have two equations, and I have two variables that I can have to solve for. Now, the easiest variable to solve for is a, <clears throat> excuse me, in both situations. So I'm going to divide both sides um, by the b expression. So I'll have, on this first one, I'll have a equals 6 over b to the first power. In this one, I'll have a equals 162 over b to the fourth power. Now, because a and b are both equal to each other, or excuse me, I said that incorrect. Let me start over. Because both of these expressions have the same a in it. That a and that a have to be the same for me to have a function. Since this a and this a are equal, I can take this expression, 6 over b, and 162 over b to the fourth, and I can set them equal to each other. So I'm going to go 6 over b is equal to 162 over b to the fourth. All right. Now, this is a proportion. So I'm going to cross multiply here. I'm going to multiply both sides by the, the b to the fourth. So I'll have um, b to the fourth times six 
And I should have done it the other way. Let's let me rewrite it. Let's, just, let's do a better job. Let's go um, 6b to the fourth over b equals to 162. And I'll say multiply both sides by b to the fourth. Okay. And now I can reduce because b to the fourth over b is just b to the third. And then, so reduce um, left fraction. And so I'm going to divide by 6. That will give me b to the third equals, well, 162 divided by 3 is 54. Okay. And raise both sides to the one third power. So I have B to the third to the one third equals fifty four to the one third. Wait a second, wait a second. I made a mistake here, didn't I? Um, I should say, this isn't in the email. I really didn't close at all, so I'm sure you guys are laughing at me. Um, 162, that's right, 162, I need to divide by 6, because I know 1. So 162 divided by 6, not by 3, 27. That's going to work out a lot better. So let me fix that. 160, so this is going to be 27. And then I got B to the third to the one third equals 27 to the one third. And uh, power to a power, A to the B, or let's do it this way, A to the 7, A to the, A to the X to the y is equal to a to the x times y. So 3 times 1 third is just going to give you b because you'll have 1. And then 27 to the 1 third, we can do that in our calculator. 27 raised to the 1 divided by 3 power gives me 3. And so my final answer, well, I don't know what my final answer is yet because I have to I have to figure out what a is because I now know what b is. So. This is B. We have to find A. And we remember that 6 over B is equal to A. And so 6 divided by 3 will give me a 2. So my A equals to 2. And my final answer is going to be F of X equals 2 times 3 to the X. There we go. All right couple issues there but well we, we got through it okay sample this is a simple half-life problem and it's simple because we're going to be able to do it in our head uh, mechelianium has a half-life of 15 years if there are five pounds of mechelianium today how much will be there well, how much will there be left in 45 years well if 15 years is one half-life Then 45 years is three half-lives. All right. And so essentially, every time you have a half-life, you divide this by two. And so this thing is going to be five times a half three times. So we can do that with our calculator. 5 times 0.5 raised to the third is going to give me 0.625 pounds will be left. All right. 
Well, that's all I got for today, folks. So the Marvel fun fact of the day in Spider-Man Far From Home from 2019, when Peter Parker and his classmates are picked up at the airport, it depicts being in Newark Airport, New Jersey, United States, with the New York skyline in the background. But this was actually filmed in a UK, in the United, uh, United Kingdom, in Great Britain. So... In order for it to look like it's American, they had to change all the vehicles and they had to point them the other way because in Europe they drive on the left-hand side instead of on the right-hand side. So there's some movie trickery for you. That's all I got. Have a good day. Bye.